Hi there. Welcome to Taxonomies. I'm Brad Rourke talking to you from Rockville, Maryland. I've been going to a lot of meetings lately. Some of them have been big, some have been small. At all of them, there have been people taking notes. I've been noticing the different ways that people take notes. It seems to me there are seven. Some people use spiral-bound notebooks. I remember those from when I was a kid. Well, they had a spiral binding and, uh, and they're nice little notebooks. The problem with those, though, is that when you rip the pages out, they create this confetti, this sort of raggedy edge, you know what I mean. It makes it hard to file them. You always want to sort of pick it off, and then you've got this long piece of raggedy paper you don't know what to do with. Now there's another kind of notebook that some people use, and I'm seeing it more and more lately, and I have to admit to you, I really don't like it. It's the, the moleskin sort of style notebook that looks very fancy. It's got some sort of nice uh, long fibered paper. It looks like it's, it's bound like a hardbound book and they're marketed in sort of fancy catalogs for people who, who like to feel like they read a lot or like to feel like they travel a lot or, or stuff like that. And I guess the reason I'm down on them is that I used to use things like that and one time I used to write everything down, I mean everything, and in meetings at least, and one time, and I felt like I was really, really, really uh, efficient and productive and a great worker, and one time my boss just, just looked across the, the way at me and he, he said, how, how do you find anything in there? And, and he meant it as a, as a real question. He wasn't, he wasn't criticizing me, but I took it as criticism, and I, and I realized as I got to thinking that things were getting lost in my fancy notebook. In fact, a lot of things were getting lost in my fancy notebook. There I would write stuff down, and if I didn't review what I'd written down, if I didn't spend a half an hour or more per day reviewing what I'd written all day, then I would never see it again. It would just be out of sight, out of mind, because there I would be on a new piece of paper, a new piece of paper in my notebook. I would fill these things up. In fact, I used to work at a library that had a lot of uh, a lot of famous people's papers, and I realize now, looking back, that I thought I was creating like this archive where you know when I was famous and and dead or dead and famous that that my papers would go to a library and and there'd be this series of notebooks and some scholar sometime in the future would 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 see the the amazing amazing things that were coming out of my head and coming out on paper and that I was never ever going to see again because they were lost. So eventually I quit using those notebooks and I, you know it's my own personal preference and my own personal story but I have to admit to you when someone pulls out a fancy notebook in a meeting that looks like it's like a hardbound kind of thing I always just sort of wonder inside if they're really really going to remember anything that goes on or if they're just doing it because it feels really fancy now there's a there's a cousin to the mole scheme and it, and it's uh, sort of a cousin from the other side of the tracks and you you've seen these before they're comp books remember those they're they're sort of got that black and white sort of chipboard kind of cover and they're they're sort of neat and they're cheap unlike the moleskines but they have the same problem which is which is really when you get down to it you can't really rip the pages out in any in any efficient way and file them later or do anything with them. So once you've written it, it's locked in there. You can't do a thing with it. Now I will say as an aside, I've seen people use blue books like they, that you used to use in, in college for your final exams. People have used blue books to, to take notes and that's sort of cool in a way um, and you can sort of cut them apart and file the pieces elsewhere. But still, they, they, just, they just don't cut it for me. My favorite method of note taking, I'll just be honest with you, is a, is a plain old legal pad. The reason is that it doesn't put on any airs, they're always available, they're cheap, and you can rip the pages out and file them, Xerox them, send them away, scan them, do anything you need to do with them. If you're pretty diligent, if you're even just a little bit diligent about working your notes, you can always find what you've written down in a meeting if you use a legal pad and then file the stuff away 
in the appropriate file. It's not true with notebooks, and it's not always true with spiral-bound notebooks either, because the temptation, because of those raggedy edges, is to leave all those pieces of paper right there in the notebook. Now, there's a couple other ways that I've been seeing people take notes, and one way is more and more and more and more prevalent, and that's to use a laptop. Now, again, I'm just going to say my personal preference, and when someone opens up a laptop, especially if they're sitting across from me at a table, I feel like they're not in the meeting. I feel like they've just put a wall in between me and them, and what they're really doing is typing down everything that happens, or they're IMing or emailing their friends. But even if I know there's no internet connection, I feel like they're not there. And in a, I tell you, in a two-person meeting, that can be pretty depressing, because suddenly I feel like, and this might not be true, I feel like I'm the only one who's contributing to the meeting. Now, I know, and in fact I can, I can even anticipate the emails now, that laptops have their place in business meetings and, a lot of, and it's easier, far easier, to type something once rather than write it and then type it again. But I guess my real point is that that writing down is quite useful, at least it is to me, because it makes you think about what you're doing. When I'm typing, and especially when I'm typing fast and just typing what goes on, all I'm doing is typing. My head is sort of turned off. I don't have to, um, I don't have to think about what I'm doing and synthesize and 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 understand what's going on. Whereas if I'm writing down, just the fact that it takes time to write down and I have to choose my words and it takes effort the more words I write, all of that together adds up to me thinking a little more clearly and a little harder about what's going on, what I'm writing down, why I'm writing it down, and finally, at the end of the day. It means I retain what goes on better. And after all, that's what notes are for, right? To remember later, to keep a record of the important things that happened in a meeting. Now, there's two other kinds of note taking, and I have very little patience for them. The first is the person who pulls out the agenda for the meeting and starts writing on the back of it, or pulls out an envelope and starts writing on that, or a cocktail napkin. That's incredibly rude to me. It means that going into the meeting, they didn't anticipate anything important happening, and they aren't the kind of person who walks around with anything to write on anyway. Maybe they've even borrowed a pen from you. That would be pretty funny. And you just wonder when they write something down on one of those, if they're really going to ever remember it. In fact, my own sense is that they probably won't. Finally, there's one other kind of note taker. And that's the kind of note taker who doesn't take any notes. People like that, they just bug me. It's like they were never in the meeting. Even if they've contributed, I feel like they're not taking part. Note taking is for everyone but them. And invariably, they come around and ask me, or ask someone else who's taken notes, hey, what happened in that meeting? Or could you send me that to-do list that was generated? Sometimes I'm tempted to figure out a way to say no. Usually I don't. I send it along. Sometimes I'll make a quiet joke about, well, you know, if you'd written it down yourself, I wouldn't be doing this. But there's really no way to make that joke in a nice way, and so most of the time I don't. So there you have it. My friend, the legal pad. Let's see? There you go. That's how I take notes. It works for me. It's not the best, but it works for me. Hey, how do you take notes if you do?